Good morning everyone and welcome to the 106th edition and the beginning of week 22 of week 22 of Rise and Shine. And to begin this week, I thought we'd tackle the topic of Immortality now. Immortality. Obviously, it's the concept of living forever. Never being able to die. But then some forms of it have at least one way for them to die. So they're completely immortal to us. But mortal to each other. Hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a list of fictional immortals and give you a few examples. Okay, a few examples of fictional immortals. First of all, we have Angelique Bouchard Collins from Dark Shadows. Her original history, Angeli was born as Miranda Duval during the 17th century in the West Indies of Martinique. During her early teen years, Angeli travelled to America where she became a faithful and loyal follower of a warlock named Judah Zachary. Judah took Angelique under his wing and taught her the sacred arts of magic and witchcraft. One year later, both Angelique and Judah were captured and exposed as witches by the Catholic Church. Fearing her fate of death, Angelique betrayed Judah by testifying against him in exchange for her freedom. Miranda was later reincarnated as Angelique Bouchard. She was raised by Theodore Bouchard, who she believed to be her father, before becoming, before coming to work for the Dupree's family. Later, Angelique realizes her father was Andre Dupree, but never tells him. As the Countess Natalie Dupree's servant, she follows her to Colinpool, Maine. However, after having a brief affair with Barnabas Collins, rekindling her romance with Barnabas, Angelique hexed a powerful spell to manipulate Josette's love for Jeremiah Collins, Barnabas's uncle. 
after Joseph eloped with Jeremiah, what she did to Barnabas and tried to reverse her spell, she is the first victim of her own curse. Being in love with Barnabas, he strangles her in the secret room of The mausoleum, her soul is claimed by the Dark Lord in exchange for letting Barnabas continue existing as a vampire through her curse rather than perish. Now I'm not going to read the whole article, but that's the first example. Second example. will be Claire Bennett from Heroes this is her background Claire was born to Nathan Petrelli and Meredith Gordon two people possessing abilities Noah Bennett and his partner Claude who were agents for the company arrive at Meredith house to abduct her Claude goes inside to do the lifting with well no one waits outside until Meredith combusts and blows the door open. Noah runs inside to find Claude on the floor. Claude then tells Noah to find Claire. Noah finds her and carries her out safely. Noah and his wife Sandra later adopt her. In the graphic novel, Ellie's First Assignment, which takes place before the series begins, Bob gives Ellie her first assignment, which is to track and follow Claire, posing as a student at Union Wells High School. Ellie is reluctant, but Bob informs her that Claire is important to the company. Claire never realises that Ellie is following her. Six months prior to the start of the series, Claire had just become a cheerleader at her high school with the help of her friend Jackie Wilcox. During an argument on whether or not she wants to be a cheerleader with Jackie. Claire crashes into a glass case, cutting her hand. When they show Claire's parents, Mrs. Bennett says that Claire might need stitches. After Claire, Jackie and Mrs. Bennett leave for the hospital, the phone rings and Mr. Bennett answers, It is Chandra Suresh. A scientist who studies paranormal phenomena, informing him of Claire's power. Several days later, Mr. Bennett asks if he can see her hand with the stitches. When they unravel the cloth around her hand, they are both surprised to see not even a small scratch. After discovering this abnormal ability, Claire decides to try stunts, where she gets a boy from her school to videotape. Okay, now we're not going to go into the whole synopsis of Claire again. Okay.
Christian Walker. From the comic book series, Powers. Christian Walker's origin was explored in the story arc Forever in Powers. Volume 1, issues 31 to 37, initially thought of as a boring two-dimensional character due to his lack of conversation, which, he, which has since been put down to a feeling of having had every discussion before, like an old man that couldn't be bothered to finish his sentences, in the letters pages of the book. The origin was acclaimed for its originality and filled out some questions surrounding Walker while further raving some more. It all started at the dawn of man when two Cro-Magnon men have a disagreement over a woman and starting and start fighting, both surprised and confused. To find that they have powers. The fight rages on for days and destroys everything in its path. As the first superpowered battle eventually tiring them out, they walk away from each other in, in a stalemate. One of these first eight men was Christian Walker. Right, hang on. Okay. I'm not going to read everything about that either. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to look under D for an example. How about Claudia Donovan from Warehouse 13? Claudia is a very in, is very intelligent, resourceful and technologically savvy, but has no college education. At the conclusion of season one, she is known to be nineteen years old. Though she has her twenty first birthday party during se in season four. Claude's parents died but Claudia's parents died when she was very young. And for some years, she was raised by her older brother, Joshua. When Josh disappeared, presumed dead, Claudia had to fend for herself with no money until Josh was found. As revealed in the season one episode, Claudia, about 12 years prior to that episode's main timeline, Joshua had met Artie Nielsen while attending college. Posing as a professor, Artie attempted to dissuade Joshua from pursuing a dangerous experiment in teleportation. The experiment went badly wrong with Josh disappearing in a brilliant flash of light. Believing him dead, Claudia lost the only family she had left. About ten years later and six months prior to the events of Claudia, Claudia began to have visions of Joshua, believing herself to be going insane from grief. 
Anne. Anne. She checked herself into a psychiatric care clinic. Eventually, she came to realise that Joshua was in fact alive and trying to contact her from the immaterial prison of the interdimensional limbo that resulted from his experiment. After about four months in the psychiatric ward, Claudia checked herself out and began efforts to rescue her brother. <laughs> okay, now we're not going to read through this whole article again. Okay. Maybe one more example. Let's go for a good one. How about Isaac and Miria from Bacchanal? So that's Isaac Deanne and Miria Harvin. Are fictional characters in the light novel and anime series Bacchanal, written by Ryogo Narita and illustrated by Katsumi Inami. Isaac and Miria are a pair of idiotic and eccentric lovers who dress up in costumes and commit strange robberies. In, probation, in probationary United States in 1930, the duo are two of many characters who mistake an immortality elixir for alcohol and drink it at a celebration, inadvertently gaining immortality and eternal youth. The next year, they board the Flying Pussyfoot Express train and survive the bloody hijacking that occurs. Isaac is arrested for several thefts in 1934 and imprisoned on Alcatraz Island. He is released the same year and reunites with Miria. The pair continue to live happily, finally realizing they are immortal in 2001. Isaac and Miria appear in the other media relating to Bacchano franchise, the Bacchano franchise, including the video game, the two drama CDs, and manga adaptation. Numerous publications in various media 
have been written on the subject of Isaac and Miria's characters. Why am I reading that bit? That's not important. Anyway. That's it for this episode, guys. And I will see you again tomorrow.